Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Welcome to another segment of From the Master's Table. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in and being with us. Solicit your prayers on tonight. Just throw a prayer out for Pastor Lewis. Amen. As we share in God's word. Faith. I guess that's where I'm at tonight. That a root my problem faith to know that God can solve them faith to envision my freedom I have the faith that can conquer anything. Amen, amen, amen. Let us pray. Gracious, gracious and everlasting Father God, Lord, we Thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, for this chance and this opportunity to share in your word on tonight, God, with the people of God, with whomsoever will, God, that will tune in. We pray, oh God, that thy Holy Spirit will sweep over our souls. Take us now, God, to higher heights and to deeper depths in Christ Jesus, oh God. Let your presence be felt, Father, across this broadcast, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, for we look unto the hills from which come our fire. help. We know that our help comes from you, oh God. I pray now, oh God, that you would touch the hearts of your people everywhere, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, we thank you and we praise you, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. God bless you. Thank you, all my father's children. Amen. Tonight, tonight. We want to talk about faithfulness. How faithful are you to God? And where is your faithfulness? Where is your faithfulness? Because he is faithful to us when we are not. Amen. So we thank God for his faithfulness toward the children, toward us in Jesus' name, you know, because He is God and that there's nobody like him nowhere. And we're going to be coming from 1 Corinthians, 1st chapter. We're going to turn around the ninth verse. And the awesome thing is that I received this as an encouragement. I received this today as an encouragement from Prophet Copeland and it just moved on me on my heart and so I thought it was something nice that we would talk about on tonight something that we could share with on tonight how you doing there sister Jackie thank you amen for tuning in amen sister Wadia thank you for tuning in so our foundational scripture is found in first corinthians first chapter and verse nine it says king james version reads like this god is faithful by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his son jesus christ our Lord, God is faithful (laughs) by whom ye were called unto the fellowship, unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, NIV says, God is faithful who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. What God who is what? Faithful. 
He's called us into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. Let me read the message. I like the message. I like some, some of the passages, how, how the message Bible breaks them down. It says, just think, you don't need a thing. You've got it all. All God's gifts are right in front of you as you wait expect, expectantly for our master Jesus to arrive on the scene for the finale. And not only that, but God himself is right alongside to keep you steady and on track until things are all wrapped up by Jesus. God who got you started in this spirit shares with us the life of his son and our master Jesus. He will never give up on you. Never forget that. He will never give up on you. And, and so does he only just say, praise be the God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So what is faithfulness to you? I mean, what does faithfulness look like to you? You've heard me say he is faithful to us when we are not. He is faithful to us when we are gone astray, gone about our business. How you doing, Sister Crystal? God bless you. When we doing our own things. Hold that, Pastor Dana. God bless you. So, so what does faithfulness look like to you? So, to be faithful is to be reliable, steadfast, and unwavering. Scripture teaches us that a double-minded man, a double-minded man, is unstable in all his ways. You understand? So, you know, I, I, what about your Christian walk? Have you have, have you said, oh? I'm, for God, I live and for God, I'll die. You know, we get saved. We're on fire for the Lord. And the minute when things don't go our way, the minute that the enemy raises his ugly head, we want to duck and run and, and hide. And, you know, um, but that's not. No, nope, nope, he never said he never said that the road would be easy. He did not promise you sunshine always. You understand? Um, he told you to endure your Christian walk as a good soldier and then he tells you how to be a soldier how many soldiers how many of you have even thought about i'm a soldier in the army of the lord excuse me how many of you ever considered yourself you know a soldier in the army of the lord so so look look look, look at the bible Just speaks of this type of faithfulness in four ways as attributes of God. As a positive characteristic of some people, some people are faithful, all right? As a characteristic that many people lack faithfulness and as a gift of the Holy Ghost. So we, we, we need to understand that <laughs> When we receive the Holy Ghost, it empowers us, it strengthens us to be faithful to God. Faithful is also used in, in the sense of believing, as in the case of Christians and, and Ephesians. You know, and I shared that with you when we did um, Ephesians, the whole book of Ephesians. And, and right there in chapter one and in verse one, Ephesians chapter one and verse one. Give me a minute. Because I lost my page. All right. Here we go. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1. It says, Paul, an apostle of Christ, Jesus, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and are faithful in Christ Jesus. It said, it is something when Paul, you know, or, or, or when God himself can brag on you, when, when God himself can 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 allow other people who have spiritual insight to see the spirit of faithfulness in you to know that you you are faithful i i say that i say that because when we dedicate ourselves unto the lord when we present this one says present your body as living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto the lord and that means that that that, that um you are determined to run on to, and to see what the end is going to be, that you are determined to see what it looks like in spite 
uh, you know, Col Colossians says, one and two says, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God, our Father. You know, when, when God is able to call you faithful, when God is able to call you faithful and put you in the category with, with Job, you understand? And, and that's a rough category to be in. But God knew what was in Job. God knew that Job would be faithful regardless, beyond the shadow of a doubt. God knew. And um, we used to have, I used to have a joke with a friend of mine. Hello there, um, Moni. God bless you. I used to have a um, contact. You know, how faithful are you? How, how, how true to you? How, how true are you to this? You understand? And you'll know just how faithful you are when you've been put to the test when you have been tried in the fire when you have been tried in the fire and you know you know we we like to say when you've been tried in the father you shall come forth as what pure gold pure gold you know and so we as believers we, we as believers need to understand first of all that when we commit ourselves unto the lord when we commit ourselves unto god he commits himself on to us, but he's not like us. He's not like us. He's not here today and gone tomorrow. He's not up today and down tomorrow. You know, our, our emotions oftentimes get in our way when it comes to our relationship, not only with God, but with each other. I ain't calling them because they don't call me. Y'all know how y'all do. What if God said that to you? What if God said, well, there's no need for me to answer any of your prayers there's no need to me to give you anything because you won't even pray to me you won't even call on me what if god was to act like you and i um the songwriter said oh if everybody if everybody had jesus what a wonderful world this would be if everybody had jesus but what if jesus began to act like Everybody else, y'all know how fickle y'all are. <clears throat> y'all know how devil minded you guys are. Y'all know how we often we run off at the gives, we talk too much. Praise God, we, we, we do things that we ought not to do. <laughs> so, 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 scripture speaks often of God's faithfulness over and over as we learn that when God says he will do something. He does it. Not, not like you and I. We give our word. We make our promise. And something comes up that is beyond our, our control. And, and we we break our promise. Or some of us would just be like, ah, I said I was going, but I, I, don't, I don't feel like it. And, and the sad part about it, 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 it you really just lied. You, you, you just told a big fat lie. That's what you did. You said you was going to do it, and you reneged. You didn't do it. And that's all out lie, you know. If ands of us around it, you just say, "Oh, I'm, I'm just gonna stay home." You wouldn't say, and then come up. You just purpose that they'd be all right. They'd be all right. So, in the Bible tells us it's best not to make that vow. It's best not to make that promise. It's best not to not, not to give your word when God gives His word. God gives his word. How I many you know that when God gives his word, he got all of heaven backing it up. When God says he's going to do it, we as believers, we can bank on it. We can trust it. We can believe it. And stand because his word does not come back void. You understand? He um, watches over his word to perform it. All right. So, so he's, when God says he's going to do something, he does it even when it seems impossible. And, and something my bishop posted on Facebook the other day, it, it got me thinking. It got me thinking. It, it, it stirred something up in my spirit about asking God for impossible things, about seeking God for impossible things. Now, hear what I'm saying. I'm not saying to go contrary to his word. That's not what I'm saying. But if it's in the ramification of what is written in the word of God and, 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 and in our belief system, listen, just, just stretch out on faith and begin to believe God because because this is what I'm saying now the Bible says teaches us this what seems impossible for man is possible 
with God. Scripture says that all things are possible if you would only believe. <laughs> so so what, what, I want, what I want us to do as believers is that I want us to move from to, to a realm of, 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 of impossibility, but being, but being possible with God. I, I, I need to start stepping out of our box or our comfort zone and begin to seek God for, for, for what people would think would be the impossible. Um, I got, I got so many things happening in in, in 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 my thought process spiritually. So, um, because um, I'm, I'm seeking God about the power. Has the church lost its power? And it's something that God gave me maybe close to what ten years ago, babe. Mm-hmm. You know, and 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 so somebody brought it back up and it stirred up within me again. It stirred up within me again. And so now I'm at the point where, all right, God, we, 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 we're living in, in, in perilous times. We're living in strange times. But there, but nothing is uncommon to God. God knew. God, God knew that this um, pandemic would hit. God, God knew about, about this coronavirus. Nothing catches God by surprise. But in the midst of it all, we as believers, what have you been doing? With this time, what have you been doing since 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 things were closed down and we were not allowed to go anywhere? What have you been? What have your conversations been like with God? Let's bring it a little closer to home. What has your conversations been like with family members, with with your children, with your husband and your wife? You, you listen. You, 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 there was no place that you could go. <laughs> you really wasn't missing out on anything because if anything was happening, it was happening at home. And most people didn't want you in their house just based on the fact that you don't, they don't know if you got COVID or had COVID or bring COVID into their home. So, so when you when you look at when you when when you begin to contemplate, when you begin to think about it, you can't do nothing but say, okay, God. Okay, God, speak to me. I, I have some questions, God. I have some, some some thoughts, some ideas, some things that I need answered, God, and that only you can answer them. You know, so, so many times we, we we take things for granted. We, and, and a lot of times in our lives, we, we we've taken the freedom. Hello, here, the freedom to go. Any place and every place we thought we was big and bad enough to go, but now we, we we don't have those freedoms anymore. It's not like that anymore because I want to go to my favorite restaurant, but my favorite restaurant was closed down. I want to go to to my favorite store, but what is the chances or the possibility that? I could catch something. Hmm. So what have you been doing with your time with a God who was faithful beyond a shadow of a doubt that when we speak to him, that, that he that he can answer. So the impossible things, the things that are impossible for men, but are possible with God. When, when, when God, when he says something will happen, it will happen. And, and this is true for the past, the present, and the future. We have things written in scripture that 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 that, that God would reveal unto his children unto unto unto, unto his people. And and, and and they would surely come to pass. They would they would surely come to pass. And here we are, God's people. What is the last thing that God spoke to you about and that you saw it manifest? in front of you. Is that not enough for you to what? Have faith in God. Is that the, the last time that you spoke to God and God moved on your behalf? How you doing? Uh, um, Tika, um, so, uh, so what was it? What was the conversation? When one of the things that, that keeps me focused, that keeps me grounded is that things that God has promised me years ago 
are coming to fruition, are, are, are coming um, um, to manifest itself right before my very eyes. And and one of the, the biggest things that God said is that when he said that we would have a son and he running around here, getting on everybody's nerve on a good day. Hello here. But, but, but what is it? What, what is it that you have laid out before God before and now and even future that you're looking for the manifestation of God, for you're looking for God to move on your behalf <laughs> with, with faith, knowing that you're on, that you're, you're, you're unwavered, that you're, that you won't give up, that you keeping it before the Lord, knowing that God is able to do the impossible, to make the impossible possible. So, so, so scripture speaks often of God's faithfulness over and over. We learn that when God, when, when, when God moves, when God sends his word, it, 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 it performs just what God sent it out to do, that, that it does not return to God void and we're able to stand upon it. And what I like about scripture, the Bible teaches us that we have the power or the authority to use God's word. Understand? And, and that's what he tells us. He said, keep him in remembrance of his word. And then, then not like that, he tells us to speak his word, speak his word, speak my words and speak my words only. So in every situation, we ought to be speaking God's word in the situation, to the situation, but we should be speaking God's word to him. He said, keep my word ever before me, which, which, which means that not that God don't know his word because he knows his word, but he, but he wants to see if you know his word. It's, it's a difference when we know something. All right. When we know something, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if you put bleach on colored clothes, it's going to stain. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know about if you put chlorine bleach on colored clothes, it's going to fade them and it is going to stain them. All right. So, so our job as, as believers, we, we, we need to understand that when we put our trust in God, when we look to God, there's something required of us in our walk and our faithfulness poor God, in order to receive from God. The Bible says that he must believe that he is rewarder of them that do what? Diligently seek him and that he, that and that God is. So when you want to get something from God, when you're ready to receive something from God, you have to go after God wholeheartedly. And there's a twofold blessing here. You're seeking God concerning something that 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 is vitally important to you, something that you desperately need and that you know that only God can do it. And in the process of you going after God, in the process of you seeking God concerning this thing, God is blessing you. God is building you up in him. Now, 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 now listen, God is not an ATM machine where you stick your card in and, and, and money comes out. That's not how God operates. But my prayer, my desire is that I tell people this all the time, you begin to seek God. And I almost guarantee you that in the process of you seeking God, God strengthening you, building you. And in the process of time, you're developing a relationship with God. You, you, you're developing a relationship with God. And now you begin to see not only is able to do that, but your love for God has blossomed and it has grown. <laughs> it has grown. So it's a wonderful thing. It's, it's one thing when 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 we set out to 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 when we set out one thing to find out one thing about God and God leads us into something else. If you if you're familiar, um there's a movie out called God is Not Dead. God is not dead. And, and it's based on a true story of this journalist who, who whose wife found God. Who wife his wife got saved. She was dealing with some illnesses and she met a lady that she knew, and the lady invited her to church and she went to church. And so, because he was raised atheist, he set out to prove 
that there was no God. <laughs> and in the process of trying to prove that there was no God, that God did not exist, he found out that there was something to this thing. And he found out that God really does ex exist. And, you know, so, so I say that to say, when you begin to seek after God, when you go after God with, with a, a different kind of intention, as long as we keep our hearts open, you understand, and begin to really look at the 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 the, 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 the facts, the proof that is out there, you begin and see, maybe there's something to this thing. But we're talking about being faithful to God. We're talking about being faithful to God. So, so, so let, let me encourage you this way. Let me encourage you this way is that when you write down something or the things that you desire of God to do, and then you begin to see, see, and think about God. Listen, you can't, you can't discredit God. You, you can't fool God. You, you can't pull a whammy over God. God knows the intent and the contents of our hearts and all those things. But oftentimes for the unbeliever to get the unbeliever's attention, God will do something miraculous. God will do something unexpected to let you know who he is. And I'm still God and I, and I sit on the throne. Hello here. You know, I raise man up and I pull men down. I, I, I'm God and, and my blessings are true. My promises are true. And what like he, the scripture says that he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. But to get the, the, the attention of the unjust, I'm going to do something for them in their lives. He, he just awesome like that. He's just awesome like that. And, and, you, and you'll be and look at the people. I, I let me say like this. Look at the people in scripture that we don't read about. They were believers. We don't read about that, 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 that they went to church Sunday after Sunday. We don't read in the scripture where they serve God with all their heart and with all their soul. We don't read that. But they had an encounter with Christ. The blind man said, listen, I don't know how he did it. I, I don't know how he did it. All I know was I once was blind, but now I see it. Who was it? His, his name is Jesus. Jesus did it. Jesus did it. And, and, and because what happened to the blind man, the miracle, it brought the blind man testimony before great men or men of authority, men in power. The, um, listen, um, the, the woman at the well, the woman at the well, listen, she met Jesus and, and started a revival. Basically, by telling others, she started preaching, come meet a man. I met a man. What's that suggestion? Can you please post the scripture in Corinthians? Um, yes. Um, I'm going to get Dana put that up there. First Corinthians, first chapter, our key verses, verse nine. All right. So, so let, me, let me just work with those here. So, so if this were not the case, if God was were unfaithful, even once, he would not be God. And we could not rely on any of his promises. But we know that he is faithful and that God never comes short of his word, that he is faithful and just. All right. So <clears throat> and he proves himself over and over and over and over and over and over. But as it is not one word has failed, not one of God's words has failed of all the good promises he gave. God is eternally reliable, steadfast, unwavering, because faithfulness is one of his inheritance attributes. That's who God is. He's what? Faithful. When you don't show up, when you don't keep your word, when you don't keep your promise, God still is faithful. Um, because <laughs> hmm. listen, Look, look, look how first Kings and I, and, and this is the English standard version. First King chapter eight, verse 56 says, blessed be the Lord who has given rest to his people, Israel, according to all that he promised. Not one word has failed of all his good promise, which he spoke by Moses, his servant. I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. I'm taking you to a fertile land. 
all right? A, a land that that that's as far as your eye can see, I'm going to give it to you. you know and you need to know as believers that when we begin to put our faith, when we begin to put our trust in God, it will change the atmosphere around us. Yeah, it will yeah, change yeah, people yeah. around us. God moves in the um behind the scenes in the unseen. God's when God is moving instead you know, until it manifests itself to the natural. You know, it happens in the spirit in, in the heavenly first in the spiritual realm for those of us that believe God. And then it manifests itself right before our eyes in the flesh in 3 days where you can touch it. Hello here. Huh? <laughs> so 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 we need to understand he's steadfast, unwavering, and he's faithful. All right. Because that's one of that's his attributes. That's who that's one of them. Who is. God does not have to work at being faithful. He is faithful. He does not have to work at being faithful. He is faithful. Faithfulness is an essential part of who he is. <laughs> Um, listen, listen, Psalms 89 8 puts it like this O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty as you are, O Lord, with your faithfulness all around you. What's well, that, so Jackie? This verse really speaks to me, and I am standing on God's promise. Pray, 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 praise the Lord, praise the Lord. He's faithful in his promises, he's faithful in his promises when he says that. By his stripes, I am healed. He's faithful in his promises that he says, when you call me, I will answer. Then he's faithful in his promises when he says, ask, seek, knock. You understand? Listen, when we ask, he says, yes. He says, "Door that all things are possible if we would do what just believe." Are there any believers on here with me tonight? <laughs> and then, because if you're gonna receive from God, you got to believe in God. All right. So, so. In his faithfulness, God protects us from evil. <laughs> Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So, so in his faithfulness, God protects us from what? Evil. But the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. And, and, and you need to understand that the wickedness and the evil that's going on in the world today, God is a covering. God is a protector. And God will protect you and your family and whomsoever will you bring into your household, whomsoever that you cover in prayer. Yeah. Listen, that's who God is. I, I, I I know, be honest, have a doubt that that for the last year, I think we've been online for for about a, for about a year, and now, so we're looking at 11, 10, 11, 12 months. I'm experiencing, I'm experiencing the things that I have spoken to you about. That. Now they're not just words coming out of my mouth, but now they're hitting home. They're getting closer. Um, when I was a kid growing up, I'm saying my mom says that we when we need to watch what we say, we need to watch what we pray for, because we're praying to God, and just like God hears it when we utter it out of our mouth, the devil hears it too. And you know, and and the devil's job is to try to stop and block our, our progress. And so <clears throat> You know, um, his thoughts is, I, I, I bet if, if you let me attack them, like 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 you spoke to God about Moses, I can get them to curse you, God, because I, I don't believe everything that they're saying is true. I don't believe they even believe everything that they're saying. You understand? And how many of you have said things out your mouth because it sounds good if we heard somebody else say it, but we're not confident, confident in what it is or what we're saying? You understand? 
And the thing about this, this is what I've learned, <clears throat> is that when we begin to rehearse the word day and night, when we begin to speak it out of our mouths, it become alive to us. It become alive to us. You know, I know some of y'all, excuse me. I know some of y'all have instantaneous faith. I know some of y'all can believe right away, but for some of us, it takes some time to work it up. To work it up, we gotta take it. Listen, we gotta take our faith to the gym in order to build up its muscles. You understand? In Christ Jesus. So, so we 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 understand that He protects us from evil and sets on uh, and, excuse me, and sets limits on our temptations. Cause he's faithful. He know that. Listen, some of y'all babes in Christ. Some of y'all been saved a minute, but still are on infamil. I told y'all that on Tuesday night. Listen, look what he says in First Corinthians ten, um, verse thirteen. He says, "No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation." Patient, able to endure. He will not. He will not allow you to be overtaken. He will not put more on you than you can bear. He will not let you go through a trial or a tribulation that will take you out of here. He said, if you are not able to bear it, he said, if you can't stand the heat, he said, listen, I'm gonna turn the furnace off and show you the exit door. But hey, listen, I'm a student. I'm a student. I'm a student. And I've learned that if you don't learn how to pass the test, if you fail the test, you're going to have to repeat that grade again. Amen? My wife out there somewhere is then, so you need to know, you, you need to to know that it's coming up again. They may come up in a different form in a different way, but 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 there's going to be something familiar about your next crisis, something familiar about your next test. You mean like, I've been here before. Oh, I'm determined to pass this one. I know I'm coming out of this one. Hello, yeah, as pure go, I'm coming out shine. I'm coming out strong. You understand? And we have to know that as believers, you got to get that down in your spirit, down in your spirit, that that no temptation has overtaken you. Hello, yeah, that, that, that is not common unto man. So nothing new is under the sun. You ain't the first one to go through and you won't be the last one to go through it, it just comes in different forms <laughs> you understand but if they were able to come out of it if they were able to pass the test you are able to pass the test if you continue to stand with god and stand on the promises of god you're not listening to <laughs> You think you're the only one having problems? You think you don't want to have trials and tribulation? Read the book. Read the book. It's in there. You understand? But you got to know, you got to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. If he was able to do it for them, surely God is able to do it for you. Why? Because God is no respecter of persons. My brothers and sisters, God is no respecter of persons. All right? Um, is it? and he's faithful to forgive us of our sins. Many of us have made mistakes. <sighs> let, me, let, me, let me let me come to mistakes. Let me let me come back to that. Many of us have sinned against God willfully and knowingly and wantingly. I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna do this and, and I'm gonna ask for forgiveness later. Who y'all fool? <laughs> Did that make you feel any better? Yeah, I know you. It, 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 okay, it, it soothed. It put you put a bandaid over it. You put a bandaid over it. I'm just gonna ask God for for forgiveness later, cause 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 He is faithful and just to forgive us. You know when we do something wrong. Right in the midst of you doing something wrong, what if he to crack the sky and came back? Which side? Would you be on? Mm, let that marinate. Let that marinate. Let that marinate. Which side would you really be on? Let that marinate. Let that marinate. If we confess our sins, 1 John 1 and 9, 
if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to keep you. You heard me. One of my prayers is that God keep me because I can't keep myself. He is able to keep you from falling. He's able to keep you from the evil one. He's able to keep you. Understand? Strong. Listen. Man. <laughs> Man. We, 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 we need to understand. We need to understand that when we tap into the power and, and the source of God. Years ago, um, Alvin Jackson out of Detroit, Michigan, came to preach a revival at Mount Iraq, and he had preached the message, just say no. And we as believers need to understand that God has given us the power to say no to the enemy. Why? Because Scripture says that if we resist him, some of y'all say resist him. He is faithful. If we resist him, because God is faithful, if we resist the devil, he will flee. Why? Because God is faithful to give us the strength to what? To resist the devil. Y'all don't like me, do y'all? All right, Sister Tika, I, I see you with me. I see you with me. All right, Auntie, I see you with me. What's the Jackie say? God and I had a conversation about this <clears throat> the other day. I asked God, okay, what is this? Another testimony because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God has his hands on me. That's right. That's right. Listen. Hear me, Sister Jack. Hear me, Sister Jack. Hear me, Sister Jack. Go, go, go. Get Go get your Bible or, or 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 your computer or whatever device that you use your phone and begin to look up every scripture about faith. And you're going to see that when we operate in faith, that when we move in faith, that we are more than conquerors, that nothing, that everything that God said shouldn't be and cannot be, will not be because we operate in faith, which means that he given us the power and authority to speak to whatever manner of sickness and disease, whatever manner of situation that goes contrary to, to God. We got to begin to say, this I'm a king's kid. I am a child of God. I, I speak to every demonic force that shall rise up against me in the name of Jesus, and I rebuke it and I curse it back to the pit from which it came in Jesus' name. Why? Because I'm covered under the blood, and when I plead the blood of Christ against the devil, I plead the blood of Christ against every infirmity. I plead the blood of Christ. Come on, people, against everything that is not like God, and I shall rejoice and walk in victory in the name of Jesus. Why? Because He's given me power to tread upon serpents. Hello, here, huh? We got to begin to speak at, at like we know we have the power and authority. We got to be begin to speak like 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 we're God in the earth. Why? Because greater is He that is in me. Well, who is in me? The Spirit of God dwells within me, so it's more powerful than anything that I am facing in the world. So I got to begin to tell my body, listen, body, listen, high blood pressure, listen, sugar, diabetes, listen. The Holy Spirit dwells within me. You can't be in here with the whole. Holy Ghost. So I command you in the name of Jesus to get out of my body. Holy Spirit, live in me, be in me, dwell in me, and take everything that's not like God captive. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why? Because he's faithful. And when we stand upon his promises, things begin to happen. All right. We, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> listen, uh, operate in that area. Stay in that vein. I don't care what it looked like. That's why I've been telling y'all to write it down. Write that scripture down on a post-it note. Stick it on the bathroom mirror. Stick it on the refrigerator and rehearse it day and night, day and night, day and night until what? A change begin to occur in your life, in your life, in your life, in your life, right? 
My God, my God, my God. Uh, we love the Lord. Eh? All right. So, so. Listen. First Samuel. First Samuel. Chapter 12, verse 24. It says, only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. Hold on, give me a minute. Only fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all of your heart. For consider what great things he has done for you. Take inventory. Flip back through the pages of your life and see where God has never failed. See where God has showed up for you. See where God has brought you out when you thought there was no way out. See when you thought you were drowning and going under. Lord, I'm going down for the third time. And he showed up in the nick of time and pulled you out. You think if he did it again, he done changed his mind from then to now? I keep trying to God not like us. He's not bipolar. God not like us. God don't listen. The same yesterday, today, and forever. He changed not. His mercy endureth forever. You understand? And I remember, listen, sometimes you got to approach God from the mercy side. From, from the mercy side. From the mercy side. He's sitting on the judgment seat. Approaching from the, because you what? You need mercy. Why? Because you're not perfect. You need mercy. Why? Because I messed up. You need mercy. Ask the Lord, have mercy on me and forgive me. I messed up. Had Adam would have cried out in the garden instead of saying, it's that woman you gave me. No, God, I'm so sorry. Yes, I ate the fruit. Please, what? Forgive me. Listen, probably would have been a whole different outcome. Probably would have been a whole different outcome. The Bible says he's faithful and just to forgive us. Y'all not listening. All right, all right, all right. So, so, so we, we, Approaching from the mercy side, approaching from the mercy side. We share First John 1 and 9. If we, if we confess our sins, how he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. One scripture says, now are ye cleansed through the word. Some of y'all need to get in that word and take a shower, take a bath, submerge yourself, scrub some some of them, 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 them elbows and, and, and knees, you know. See, I, ain't, I heard the voice of my wife. I'm not even going to say what she would say. But spend some time. Purge me with hyssop. Wash me. God, and I shall be whiter than snow. Too many pages for a book. I need a mini series. God has never failed me. Long as you stay in remembrance of what God has always done. And let that be your banner. Let that be your banner when you speak to, 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 to whatever is bothering you, when you speak to the enemy, when you speak to that sickness. Says, Listen, um, um, sickness, God um, brought me out in 1975 with mumps and, and the measles, and they, they said I wasn't going to walk polio or whatever it was. They said I wouldn't do this, and I wouldn't be that. If God had delivered me from that, surely this is nothing that God is able to deliver me again. I am looking for you, God, to deliver to deliver me. I'm looking for you, God, to bring me out. Yeah. Mm. I'm in a fight right now. I'm in a spiritual battle. It's a, it's a natural thing, but I'm fighting on a spiritual level. Yeah. <laughs> on my job right now. Because I know they can't do no more to me than what God would allow. And up jumped the devil. But listen, I, I refuse. Listen, I refuse to be defeated in Jesus' name. I know that this crisis, this problem, this situation, God has it in the palm of his hand. I'm God's son. I'm God's son. I'm God's son. And you need to know who you are in Christ Jesus. All right? <laughs> Listen. 
Listen, um, trust in the Lord. Somebody say, trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. With all thy heart and lean not to thy own understanding. <laughs> so don't look, listen. God has the power and the authority to go contrary to what we think is the natural order of things. How is that? I, I don't know the way, way to say it. When the, when, when the children of Israel went into battle, when they went into battle, uh, um, 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 they were losing, but as long as Moses held his hands up, they would win. You understand? They they weren't warriors as, as we knew them. They were God's people. They had they were slaves who God had to train to be warriors. Oftentimes they had on the job training. But as long as Moses was hands was held up, they were winning the battle. Listen, if you can't keep your hands up, get you somebody who will pray for you and pray with you and who will read the scriptures for you and to you to keep your hands up. Why? So you, that you can win the battle. Win the battle. Yeah. Listen, listen, what would say so Jackie started in my mother's womb. I was supposed to be mentally challenged, but God, look, see, because God is able. God is with you. Now, now, now lean on that. Stand on that. Stand on God. Trust what's Christian said. Trust in the Lord and lean not to your own. Listen, not our understanding. Listen, I keep I started this all by telling you, <clears throat> excuse me, to begin to believe God <clears throat> for the impossible thing. For the impossible thing. Mm. He only wants what's best for you. He only wants what's best for you. All right. So when, don't look at the situation. Look at God. Don't look at your circumstances. Look at God. All right? He's able to bring you out. He's able to establish you on a solid foundation. All right? You will not go under. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie. You, you will not go under. The devil is a lie. Understand? Listen. He's able to restore everything that can canker worm and the locust have and the caterpillar have eaten has eaten away. He's able to restore. Excuse me. He's able to restore. Believe God. My brothers and my sisters, have faith in God. Show your faithfulness to God by having faith in God. God bless you. I got many more things to share with you, many more scriptures. Praise God. What you say, Sister Tika says, basically, if you start believing yourself, excuse me, basically, if you start believing yourself, you become confused. But when you let go and read his words, as for me, I, be, I become aware and sometimes scared, but God, then God and only God. Listen, man, I'm at a place when I read God's word, sometimes I want to cry because I can feel in my heart and in my soul. And when you begin to read God's word and study God's word and spend time with God, you, you'll feel the Holy Spirit turn up within you and it'll give you strength, you understand, to, to, to climb the mountain. It'll give you strength to, to push the mountain. It, it, it'll give you strength to, to speak to the mountain. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It'll begin to tell you to look at the situations and the things going on in your life and call those things not as if they were. Speak God, call them into existence, call them. In. And, and the thing about it, that's what's anything and everything that's going on in your life. Oftentimes we allow ourselves to be defeated when we begin to look at it with the natural eye and from a natural standpoint. You understand? But when we allow that word, listen, I, I, a thought came to me today what does words what do what do words mean to you 
What do words mean to you? For some people, words don't mean nothing. You can tell the person, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. And they, to them, they're, they're just words because they don't understand the meaning behind the word. They, and then they have not allowed that word to pierce their heart. You understand? It's the living word that, 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 that we get from the word of God, the living word, which means that when we speak it, when, when, when we read it, it should come alive within our hearts. It should be, it should become, listen, it should, it should become alive in our hearts. It's the living word that we preach. It's the living word that we teach. We serve a true and a living God and his, and it's his word. And it's his word. Amen. So I thank you all my father's children. It's, it's, it's alive to me. It's alive to me. It comes alive to me. And, and when I read that today, God is faithful by whom you were called to fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. God is faithful. God is faithful. And how faithful are we to God? And, then, and, 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 and we need to examine ourselves, check ourselves, check ourselves. Take inventory. All the times he's shown up for us and worked it out in our favor and in our care. And then that should be enough to, to, for you to say, oh no, I'm going to hitch my my wagon up <laughs> to the gospel train. <laughs> you understand? And, and, and stay there and stay there and stay there and stay there. And say, God, I won't let go until you bless me. God, I won't let go. Until, uh, uh, until you heal me, God, I won't let go until you save me, save my family, God, in the name of Jesus, you understand? Somebody needs to be praying, somebody needs to be standing in the gap, somebody needs to be seeking the Lord in every area of their life. <laughs> when you read that, that came alive, see? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, let it let let it speak to you. Let it live in you. Let it dwell in you. Amen. Say that's for me. That's for me, Lord. I believe. Hello, here, huh? All right, Amen. God bless you, all my father's children. I want to thank you for tuning in. We live on YouTube. We live on Lipstick Chronicle page on Facebook. Amen. Sunday morning, nine o'clock. We'll be live again at the Masters. I mean with morning blessings, Sunday morning blessings, amen, and yours truly will be the speaker, amen, keep me in prayer, like I said, this, 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 uh, we might have to move, we might have to go to the power, we might have to go to the power, and I need y'all to act in faith, and walk in faith, and believe God, amen, because the power is yours, it's in your mouth, amen, 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 it's in your hand, it's in you. Amen. And so we're going to have to begin to tap into the power, the source. Amen. And then meet us again here on Tuesday night at six o'clock with Lipstick Chronicles. Praise God. God bless you. I love you. I'm praying for you, you guys. Please, please pray for us. Thank you there, Sister Crystal. Thank you very much. God bless you. You keep putting them posts up there. You keep preaching. Amen. I might have to have you on here. I might have to, I might have to let you be a, a, a one of my guests. Amen. On, on either this platform from the Master's Table, which is our Bible class, or Lipstick Chronicles, or maybe even Sunday Morning Blessings. Amen. Because, you, 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 you listen, you preaching. I'm going to put it like that. You putting the word out there, and it's a good word. So I thank God. For you, it encourages me, it blesses me. Amen. If all minds are clear, let us pray. Most gracious God, our Father, Lord, we thank you, God, for what eyes have seen and for what ears have heard. Father, we thank you for your word, for we know that your word is true. I thank you, Father, for the people of God that have tuned in, O oh God, to receive a word from you, God. Now I pray that thy word has gone forth, O oh God, that it has landed on good ground. And on good soil, oh God, that they will take your word in, oh God. Apply them to their lives, oh God. And after they have been strengthened, God, that they will share your word with others so that they too can be strengthened, God, and blessed 
by what thus saith the Lord God. We pray, O oh God, that the Holy Spirit will continue to minister to their hearts and into their minds, O oh God. Let them know, O oh God, that you came to set the captives free, O oh God, that by your stripes, Father, that they are healed in the name of Jesus, of every manner of sickness and disease, that we bind the devil right now. Satan, the Lord rebuke you, and we come against you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We plead the blood right now, right now, the blood of Jesus against the enemy, for we know that there's power in the blood. Hallelujah. But there's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in the blood. And God, we thank you. Hallelujah for the power Oh, the blood that covers us, that cleanses us, that washes us, mm, my God, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you now for the victory in Christ Jesus. We thank you for the victory in all things through Jesus Christ who loves us so. God, we thank you right now, God. It will and it shall be so according to your holy word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. God bless you. I love you. Keep us in prayer. Keep Elijah in prayer. Amen. Keep my family in prayer. We thank you now. Be blessed until we meet again. God bless you. Love you. Love you, Sister D. Praise God.